Hello and welcome back to another TFR podcast. Yes, we are back. Uh, it's been a massive gap between uh, the last one we did of these, but it's good news. I'm here today with two guests, which is the first time I think all season there's been three uh, people doing one of these TFR podcasts. But um, I'm joined by the, the usual guest, uh, Cam, and um, I'm joined by a brand new one in Henry. And uh, we're going to be discussing everything about F1 within the last month or so since we've done one of these podcasts. And uh, yeah, there's been plenty of things going on and plenty of drama on and off the track. And uh, so I'll throw one straight at you, Henry. Um, we, we had the Belgium Grand Prix last weekend. And unless you were living under a rock, um, it was a bit crazy, wasn't it? But for the wrong reasons. What, what did you make of that and how we kind of had a race but not a race if that makes sense yeah I mean it ended up uh, as a pure fan uh, view it, it ended up wrong basically mm. always we want to see the races cars go head to head wheel to wheel uh, but um, if we just maybe think safety uh, uh, safety first mm. uh, I think it's uh, it was the right call but um, they did a little bit wrong if that makes sense but um, yeah it was interesting Sunday yeah that's for sure I mean I wasn't expecting to be sitting in my living room watching that for like four or five hours or whatever it was um, I, I was kind of expecting it to be maybe a long race, but for kind of different reasons than that, Cam. What did you make of it? Did you think it was a, a farce? Did you think it was the correct thing to do? What, what What's your overall take on it? I mean, you've got to sort of see it from the FIA's point of view. Mm. They're, out of anything that goes on, they're not there to provide entertainment. They, that's not their problem. That's Liberty and that's the drivers mm, and that's yeah. the teams. Their job is to ensure the rules are met, the guidelines are set, and everyone involved within that sport, whether it's fans, drivers, teams, the, like the stewards themselves, they need to make sure they're all safe. Now, the scrutiny they got on the Saturday for not red flagging those conditions uh, when Norris crashed. Now, I feel like the the rain on the Sunday was worse than what it was when Norris went out and crashed. So, their hands were tied in terms of they couldn't resume that race safely under green. Um, so, I mean, yes, from a fan point of view, it is really bad. And we'll get onto that, I'm sure, in a minute. But, the only the only thing I would question them about is why do those two laps just to cover your own back to get points when it isn't a race? Well, I think that is the thing. I think the way it ended up is that uh, Liberty Media and F1, maybe not Liberty Media to be honest, you can't really, <laughs> you can't really bring them in this. Um, there, to be it, it was your, your FIA and just F1 um, as they are. Um, they kind of, yeah, I think for them to just register that as a race, for anyone that didn't know, it needed to be a minimum two laps, and then uh, half points were awarded. Yeah, and they still mess that up as well. And that basically is just what happened. It's like, you know, they kind of were sat in the pit lane for ages and ages, and I mean, they just never really looked like there was going to be a race, and it was kind of got a few hours in and then they were like you know oh yeah in 10 minutes we're gonna restart the race <laughs> and it was like everyone was going mental thinking oh we're actually gonna have a race but um yeah it was just a couple laps under the the safety car and and that was that and for those who didn't see qualifying my goodness george russell we have to get delve into this because he put in i'm saying right now the lap of the season to get that Williams up onto the front row, very nearly taking pole position. And uh, obviously we never had a race in the end and he was given half points and awarded a podium. And Williams kind of were pretty damn happy with that. But 
should they have got points? Should any of those drivers got points? I'll throw that one to you first, Napua. Do you think it was right that the drivers were given half points essentially for their qualifying performance? I think um, it's something what we need to look at, uh, look in the future, uh, to not do the same mistakes what we did uh, as um, Sunday. So mm. maybe in future we need to get some like top ten guys get some points, but not official uh, official points just yet. Yeah. yeah. Only if we don't race in Sunday they will get the points from the qualification but um, I have to say about the race the first big mistake was when the original formation lap goes on yeah. it was two laps and then pull the cars on a bit straight yeah. I think in that time the rain wasn't that heavy so why uh, why we stop like uh, Let's continue, drive around the track, because in two laps, everybody, I, and I mean everybody, knows that uh, those track conditions, they don't improve that quickly. Mm. I think that was the first mistake, but um, uh, race, uh, race two as and directors did on a Sunday. But what comes to qualification... Oh god, that was entertaining! Oh man, I love it. Yeah, the quality like. was <laughs> yeah, the quality was like a ballsy session. Like you know, you, we saw with Lando Norris's massive crash. You know, it was kind of like it was anyone who could dare risk it. Um, and and that's the thing. That's where like I think yeah, a lot of people's argument with it is that you know with the way the qualifying was, um, you know they earned those points, but. Do you believe the same view, Cam, or do you think it should have just been an event that was kind of abandoned and scrapped and forgotten about? Uh, I don't know. I mean, the way I see it is... Ugh, I, I don't, you, you can see it from every single point of view. You can see it from half that grid will want points. Like, the drivers themselves will probably want, 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 they'll want points. Mm. But the way I see it is, it's a sport. It's not a charity. You can't just go. You know what? We're gonna limp you around the track so that we can dish out all the points. Like Formula One will not shut down because one race has been cancelled due to torrential conditions. Now you don't go out and go. Because I, I think it's not a secret that everybody knows I really dislike Lewis. <laughs> but I completely agree with him that they should never have sent them out with those two laps under the safety car just to get points. Now if you want to give, if you want to, I mean, they screwed the rule book up enough that day. If they want to go, look, it's not safe enough. You don't then go out and go, we're going to take you out there anyway just so you can have points. Mm. The only reason they didn't start the race is because they couldn't see anything under the safety car, let alone driving. Now, you take them for two laps, anything can happen under the safety car. Yeah, well... And would the... you rather... Well, uh, yeah, I, I was just going to say, like, you know, the, the thing was that the FIA were trying to do, they were looking for a window. Um, and, and there was never they, a window. And that's the thing. They 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 claim and supposedly some of the teams as well said this that there was a window um, of when they looked to restart it. But the problem was is that they had to give a ten minute warning. So by the time they then were going out, the rain just got heavier again. Um, but yeah, I mean personally, I think um, I do f in the moment. It was very much like, oh, you know, it's, it'd be nice for Williams and for George Russell getting those points because, you as know, I it would mean a lot It's not a charity, them. is it? It's a motorsport. But, yeah, like I was going to say that, you know, what if the championship now is decided on those points that, yeah. you know, weren't ever kind of, it wasn't a race, you know. 
Um, he never really got underway. And, yeah, it'll be interesting, you know, come the end of the season, if, if it will have any major impact on the title fight. And, um, um what, is it, um, is it 23 races or like 22, 22 races? Or 22, races? Okay, so, now what I would love for this to happen, but you could not sit there and justify, say, we get to the end of the season. Now, in Belgium, Max gained five points on Lewis. If Max then wins the title by one point, or four points. Yeah, so, any of any point, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. But like any points over Within under that five, five, yeah. Then I myself, and I don't think anyone else, can sit there and justify Lewis fans not being able to get angry. That they, they will have every right to get angry. And I won't, I won't back it because I don't like Lewis. But I will admit that their point is very, very valid. But equally, the the other way you can swing it is then, you know, if if you take that race away, then there's a race there. It wasn't that a race though. Yeah, but I if can't you... believe we're sat here discussing whether you should take the race away when we both just sat there and Napula said it as well. There was no race. There's no race to take away. Well, fine then. I'll Without rephrase. Without the two pity laps under the safety car, there's no race to take away. I'll rephrase. If you take those points away, um, yeah. then what you can then argue is that, oh, Verstappen was on pole, and he would have, you know, went on and, you know, who knows what could have happened, but he was on pole and there was a race there that he could have won and he's needing those points to catch Hamilton in the championship if that race was cancelled it's one less race for him to catch him um, to play devil's advocate and and likewise if that was a full race then Verstappen could have won and it could have been a bigger gap in points you know there's a lot Verstappen of different ways to it yeah but there's but the I think the point is though is with the nature of how it was sitting um in terms of that aspect, you know, yeah, but it's what I'll kind say, of like though, you is... take you take that entire race away, then yeah. you know it's it's points gone that you know it, it actually goes into favour of those who want to hang on to their position in the championship. You know, I don't it think is, there's a perfect like, answer to it. But... I mean, I will go back to my point about I couldn't justify Lewis fans. Um, I, well, I sort of I could understand Lewis fans being annoyed you can't sit there and go that they shouldn't be annoyed now it would be completely different if M Max fans moaned about it if it didn't get awarded points because a race going ahead anything can happen a race not happening and you avoid those two pity laps you are just given an exact result that is just void. Now, Max fans would sit there and go, well, he could have won the race. But Lewis fans would have a much more strengthened argument that there was no race to win. Mm. And I feel like that's a lot stronger because you can sit there and go, oh, well, he could have won. He could have crashed. If the race is voided, nothing could happen. It's just... But that plays ball into ball. Hamilton's fa um, favour. Yeah, in I a know, sense. but uh, it so, plays you know. into his favour. But you eliminate the risk of someone crashing, the risk of even the safety car having an issue. Like, because you never know, that safety car could spear off into a wall. Anything could happen in that condition. If you void it and you don't do those two pity laps, you don't award points, what you do, you move on to the next race. Yeah, but. You know, I I don't know. I think it's a very easy thing to just you know do that. Like you know, I think you know they could have done that so many different races. You know, just like rock up. Oh yeah, the weather's not looking great. Let's pack up and go home. You know. But they, when you they... know you're sat there for four hours and it hasn't improved, you don't then sit there and go, let's do two pity laps under the safety car. Mm. I don't agree with that. What did you make of it, Napula? Do you think? Um, that there's any kind of case for, for you know, anyone to to be glad that the points were given or justified? What would you make of it? 
I think at least the Williams is pretty happy. Yeah. <laughs> how, it, how it goes. I think we can all agree on that one, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I have to say it's good to see Williams uh, doing the good job. Uh, they tried so hard um, past three, four seasons, and finally it pays off. Maybe way after the season they can think maybe not like how they won that, but um, they have a point. I think Alfa Romeo is a little bit pissed off. Mm. Um, <laughs> and uh, of course we don't know how about Red Bull and uh, Mercedes is feeling. Both Max and Lewis was Red like... Uh, uh, well, yeah, maybe. Let's see. Let's uh, see at the end of this season. But I feel like Max and Lewis both was like ah, they they didn't know how to reply on media, uh, mm. how the media was asking about the points, and um, it was interesting to see those um, emotions and feelings from the drivers. They, I I think they both handled it very well in the fact that yes. they didn't sit there and go. They didn't sit there and go, these points should be given and these points shouldn't be given. Like, both of them were very professional about it. Well, yeah. Hamilton, Hamilton didn't, Hamilton did say, Hamilton did say that he didn't agree with the points being given. And there's many drivers now that have that came out. No, well what he after. said was he disagreed with the safety car being put out just for the points. But I think that's the same. I think that is the same thing, though. That's the same, you know, thing. You know, I because mean, because it's like you know, you can't. His argument is that you can't give points out for just two laps of the safety car, um, whether it's half points oh, yeah. or whatever. Um, so I don't think Hamilton. I I agree with what you're saying, Napula, but I do think Mercedes are slight. Well, more Hamilton is slightly maybe disappointed that there was points given because it has closed the game. I'm concerned there hasn't been a formal like I don't know petition or like protest from one of the teams I am surprised mm. that like Red Bull or Mercedes because we've seen it all season if they spot some out of place whether it's them their rivals or the sport themselves that have challenged it no one has formally challenged this well that's yeah, that I'm aware that, of that's true there is no well, you, to, uh, you could argue if no one's willing to challenge it from a professional standpoint and someone within the sport, then how are they ever going to learn? Well, this is the thing, I'm, and and I mean, in fairness, this is like the first technically race that's like we've ne not had like one racing lap, you know. Ever. But in a massive sport like Formula One, say in football, say if it snowed it down. They would call it off instantly, and they but then they reschedule it. Then, yeah, but yeah, they would exactly. reschedule it in football. Yeah. But you now, can you can reschedule it. In yeah, the, I was about to say. Cameras. Obviously, it's a lot harder for Formula One. Mm. So, I don't think they will because it's, as you say, a one-off. But in a sport like this, you need to make sure one-offs stay one-offs. They need to put contingency plans in place so that it doesn't happen again. Hmm. Yeah, no, I agree with that. There'll be a lot more backlash than this one. No, very true. Um, and I think the thing is, another element I think they've got to look at is the cars. Because, yes, it was very wet weather, and you know the kind of weather was just stuck, really, um, at Spa. It just wasn't moving. Um, but I think the spray off the cars, you know, with the tyres... Yeah. And the nature of I think you know, that's something to do spin. with grooves in the tyres, though. Isn't yeah, it? and that's what I was just going to say. Like, you know, I think they need to have a real look into that because, you know, you look at the other formulas or or even the safety car. I mean, I know it's going at a much slower speed, but there's nowhere yeah. near the same amount of spray. Um, so there is many things F1 and FIA will need to have a look at. But we will move it on at that because we have got a Grand Prix to talk about. Um, for this weekend, but before we actually get onto that, um, Henry, you will be devastated, or you would have been devastated, should I say, when you heard the news about Kimi Raikkonen, uh, yourself being a Finnish 
um, person, <laughs> um, you, you I, I bet you were pretty devastated to see that, um, see your, your kind of country's hero in F1 um, pack his bags. Effectively a talisman, isn't it? Yeah, the news news was obviously good things um, ended up uh, at some point, but yeah. uh, personally, what kind of feeling uh, at this season I get from Gimme was uh, that uh, at least one more year with the new car. Really? So yeah. obviously, I was a little bit surprised that um, he said, "Okay, this is it." And um, when he jumped to this sport, I think I was five years old, mm. and uh, now 25. So I have watching when he was on the rally. Uh, I was heartbroken in 2009 to hear that uh, Kimi will leave F1. I was happy that he moved to rally, mm. and uh, I was happy again to hear 2012 Lotus and uh, Kimi will take the comeback and uh, obviously the Wednesday was uh, a little bit the uh, motion roller coaster yeah. again but um, uh, well we will surely miss a, a person let's mm. say and um, of course F1 goes on but um I think we will miss a huge part of F1, at least from past 20 years of motorsport. Mm. Yeah, no, that's very well said. Can I jump in real quick? Yeah, go on. Alright, what I'll say though is, like, referring to back when you said when he left in 2009 at the end of that, at least now, if he hadn't come back in 2009, that would have been brutal. Because the way he went out was with his contract and Ferrari favouring Alonso and stuff. At least now, you can sit there with the comfort. You know that he's gone out on his own accord. He's gone to the end of his career. He's had success and he stopped when he wanted to. He didn't stop when he had to, you know what I mean? So, he's... I don't know, he sounds like a sort of role model to you. But it's sort of like when Button retired in 2016... That hurt, but you know, Kimmy's done so much more for like your country and stuff that you know. I'd sort of I'd be more proud of it than upset that it's over. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's true. What you what you say about the retirement, retirement that um, he can truly say now it's time to go and not mm. like let's say Alfa Romeo says Kimmy's not continue as. He wanted to race, but we don't want it. That yeah. hurts. Uh, that hurt a lot of, <laughs> lot of um, like, um, not the way the one of the best, not maybe in a championship uh, way or how many titles he won. Not the best driver, but uh, like I said, he's a huge person and. Um, yeah, uh, obviously in Finland we don't have many many guys on the sport. Obviously a couple of young guys is coming, but I think the, uh, they are driving F4 class in Europe somewhere mm. or Germany. Well, you still so, got boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, we got, but after mm, the it's like saying Russians have still got Mazepin though, and it? it's not, it's not. Well, I wouldn't say Bottas is as bad as Mazepin. That's a bit. That's a bit. <laughs> no, nah, but the drop from Kimi to Bottas is a bit insulting. <laughs> well, I don't know. But, uh, but, but uh, about the Bottas, I think um, in different time area, he would be badass. Mm. But at this point, with that teammate, it's like uh, oh, we we three like to play games, so. It's like your teammate of Jarno, so mm. it's it's kind of bad, but good at the same time. I was just gonna ask, actually, I was just waiting uh, to the right moment, but I was gonna ask um, Napula, um, with uh, you obviously being Finnish, 
you'll have more of an inside knowledge of this but obviously just before Kimi came into F1 uh, there was obviously Mika Hakkinen um, for you guys and he was obviously a two time champion and incredibly quick as well but where do they compare in terms of within Finland you know is Kimi seen in a higher light or is Mika seen you know as because he was the first you know real big star for kind of Finnish F1 drivers you know in terms of on the global scale how what is it what's it like when you compare those two I I think it's a time era kind mm. of thing um when they both was driving at the same time 2001 there was some kind of comparing with those two guys but obviously it was Kimi's first year and uh, Mika's uh, last one <laughs> nowadays mm. I think we can say it is not uh, on a holidays uh, at anymore yeah but um, I think last time when uh, uh, Finnish media compared those guys it was uh, when Kimi takes the uh, USA win in 2018 oh, right. oh really wow I mean they're both incredible yeah no for sure that's true <laughs> if, if, if I was like, to press yeah, I just... sorry go on Cam go on I mean it... you can sit there and you can go yeah you know what you haven't got that many Finnish drivers coming into the ranks. They've got a couple of years, but you can sit there and say you have some very, very good drivers. Yeah, I mean, it's all started like '82 with Keke, mm. amazing season in the Williams. Obviously, a little bit lucky because no wins on that season and still the champion. Uh, but um, the era of Mika, obviously there is lot of stories behind it coming back to, from that uh, devastating crash in Adelaide yeah, yeah. and um, winning all the fears and um, coming back for the injury everybody who gets injured in some way they know how difficult it's coming back and uh, that kind of crash and uh, like Ron Dennis said I think some kind of interview was mm. on, uh, maybe four to five years ago about Mika that uh, one lap it was just like um, checking out how the car is handling and second lap it was old Mika back basically yeah, so yeah. I've heard that yeah it was heroic story to win a couple of uh, I mean two times champion after yeah. the crash and uh, then comes to Kimi and uh, obviously Heikki was there also and uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, of I, I nearly forgot Mika Salo to yeah, Mika Mika yeah. in British F3 I guess it was mm, yeah, in yeah. the early 90s late 80s they do okay, just dominated that, <laughs> dominated that uh, series so I think um, in my country point of view we must be happy that uh, we have Valtteri maybe yeah. five to six years in a sport still and then we need to just um, waiting for new star to come F1 how long it takes we actually don't know there yeah. is one name uh, what is Bob uh, popping up nearly every media and it's Luca Nurmi mm -hmm. Nurmi is driving uh, some kind of Ferrari series in Italy uh, at this point uh, in a GT cars and uh, it's a promising talent yeah, we just, just don't know where he's going next uh, is the F1 target of him or kind of like Vec series so let's see what kind of startup we have in future? Well, let's let's hope, um, you know, for Finland's sake, that uh, there there is some more kind of super quick drivers that come along. 
Um, I mean, when you look at a country like, you know, where we're going to race this weekend uh, in Holland, you know, they've had to wait forever for someone like Verstappen to come along. Um, so, you know, hopefully for Finland, like, you know, someone can come along when Bottas probably gets towards his last few years and, and kind of can take the bat and because uh, it's that's what it always feels like you know like from the outside obviously there has been you know quite a few Finnish drivers but it has very much been a thing of kind of like uh, Mika handing over to um, to Kimi to then it's not really kind of handed over to Bottas but Bottas has been at the front um, in the last few years so but we will we will move it on though uh, from that it was very nice hearing from you about that uh, Henry and your kind of uh, Finnish inside knowledge there. Um, but obviously there's a gap now at Alfa Romeo and we believe Valtteri Bottas will be going to uh, Alfa Romeo to, to fill the seat. Um, a Finnish driver replaced with a Finnish driver. What do we make of this, guys? Um, what do you make of it, Cam? Do you think Bottas can kind of reignite his career, really? It kind of feels like he needs that slight kind of spark at the moment because he, he's playing very much second fiddle now Verstappen's up there with Hamilton I'm going to be honest you, the word reignite I don't think that's the right word to use because no matter how good you are in and out of a Romeo you're never at a level where people notice you as being one of the best on the grid Apart from the clerk a few years ago, but yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, but that alpha, that alpha was like that midfield, was high car. midfield sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this this Alpha Romeo is a shadow of the last few Alpha Romeos and even Salvas. Mm. Now you put Bottas in it. I'm gonna be completely honest. Even if he kicks it rolling and summit sparks, I don't think he does any better than I don't know. A stuff or Van Dorn coming in with the because that car has its limits and if it could have been extracted one of them would have and they haven't so far so I don't think Bottas of all people on the grid Bottas is probably one of the ones that you wouldn't expect to be able to extract the most out of a car It'll be interesting. I think it's a bit of kind of going into the unknown because it's not the same car going into next season because there is a shake-up in the rules. Who knows? Bottas uh, could enjoy that kind of team leader role that you could argue he had a little bit when he was at Williams before Mercedes and could roll back the years. I think Bottas isn't a terrible driver. I think people, no, no, people no. are very No, no, no. You don't get in a Mercedes and you don't win races... Yeah, he competes for Hamilton. Uh, you know, if you yeah. look at last season, you know there were some times where he was very, very close with Lewis. Um, but this season, yeah, he's gone kind of back to how he was in the second half of 2018, and he's kind of yeah gone back into his shell really, and um, has has just been left behind. I mean, what do you make of it, Napula? Do you think he can kind of do anything to turn? His, uh, his form around by going to Alfa Romeo? Uh, the Alfa, Alfa Romeo situation is interesting one because there is now lots of rumors that Alfa Romeo don't want to get a Ferrari engine anymore. Yes, yes, of course. Mercedes yeah. rumored, isn't it? Uh, yeah, there so is that would of That would be able to sort of link Bottas a little bit, I guess. Yeah, but um, there is a little room, or I think it was uh, some minor motorsport uh, magazine on Italy. I don't know who the link that to me, but um, there was a rumor that Bottas is heading to back to the Williams. Obviously, Williams really? in current states, it's looking like a pretty wow. good car. Mm. And, I mean, uh, to be fair. I don't think there's much of a step down from the Williams for the Alpha this season. Yeah, they are quite close. Or the I Alpha guess. to the Williams, yeah. sorry. But I mean, in turn, it's a bit of a kind of going. It's a bit of a kind of just same old, same old. You know, I, I you know, he's going back to what he was at before by going to Alpha Romeo. It's something brand new for him. You know, in a way. it's it's possible to go to Alpha Romeo, but um, I think. Um, 
obviously I can't remember who driver did a contract just yet. Yeah. I know the Ferrari slots are closed, but um, um, the rumor Ferrari was... Ferrari and Aston Martin are closed, McLaren's closed. Well, um, we, we know, we know Bottas... Stro Stroller don't have an official... Yeah. We know, do not, well, yeah, but, but he's but dad, you know, runs it. Yeah, let, we let, basically know. Let's be real, <laughs> he's only going to go to either Alfa Romeo or Williams. There's no other team. And, you know, and unless I mean, somehow I'm... Russell doesn't even go to Mercedes and then we're oh, all completely wrong bad. and he re-signs the Mercedes somehow. I will um, say, though, I'm happy that there's no chance he goes to Red Bull. Because... I mean, he was never going to Red Bull. I mean, if... Well, no, but there was always rumours. Now that it's, like, in yeah, bed that he's but... not going. Because Red Bull need a driver. Because I don't think Perez is the man to fight for titles when they've got Lewis. And if they get George, Mark are going to be unstoppable. But I feel like Bottas needs to be, as you say, a team leader. And he needs just... He needs to be the main man for once. He hasn't been the main one man since his last season in uh, Williams. And I feel like... We saw how much of a beast he was then. Yes, he won't be sat there getting top fives every race, but he'll definitely pick up the points when needed. And he'll he'll be a great addition to whatever team he goes to. Yeah, yeah that's, that's I, I can true. agree. Yeah. Um, obviously, with him moving, we are very much... Uh, well, that's not official yet, I will just say. He's not gone to any team yet. But something that we are probably 90% sure now is going to happen. Well, is... the decision's been made. Yeah, well, yeah, the decision's been made. It's more just like, you know, in terms of it's not been made official yet, but we believe George Russell will be going to Mercedes for next year, which is going to be pretty amazing to watch him go head-to-head -head with Lewis Hamilton. Um, what do we think, uh, guys, what do we think George can do in that Mercedes. He's been fantastic in the last couple of races. We we, what he can we, do didn't, in the Mercedes. we didn't do yeah, yeah, I know, but um but we we um well, we no we, yeah yeah but the guy would have won the race twice. <laughs> um we didn't do a podcast for, for Hungary and he scored points there and kind of impressed once again. And then obviously he had an amazing qualifying last time out. So uh, Napula, do you think George can compete with Hamilton next season, or do you think he he could kind of have a bit of a rude awakening? What what do you think will happen? Always when you go to new team, we have to give some some kind of uh, waiting, mm. or we are getting some kind of waiting. Uh, I think it's nearly the to same situation as Leclerc moved to Ferrari. Yeah, everything Leclerc was, was like phenomenal. Think, yeah, everyone was, was like thinking he's learning there and uh, not challenging Vettel. Oops, the Daisy, I think it was second race already, leading by country mile before engine issues. So nowadays, the young guys, obviously, <laughs> Russell is driving. Thirty year mm -hmm. in the sport. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the normal rhythm is not new, but the team kinda, let's say, yeah. kinda is new. So I don't think in first couple of races, maybe third one, we will see the full potential out of the car. Yeah. With that guy, but. Um, yeah, the future is an uh, interesting one in the yes. top teams. It's going to be very spicy. And um, Cam, do you think it's going to be um, another uh, Nico versus Lewis type thing? Or do you think George isn't no. quite going to be as aggressive? How do you think it will play out? I mean, I, I genuinely think George, if he gets the contract, you can be dead set guaranteed that it will not be any less than two years. Mm. Now, you know Lewis probably isn't going to stay for another two over two years. So if I was George, and what I genuinely think he will do, is not leave anything on the table. He's got at least two years from while Lewis is contracted. 
got at least two years to prove himself against a widely debated but by many fans regarded as the greatest of all time now if he, in those two years he can if not beat him or just show that he's matching him he's proved that he he's a force to be reckoned with and this is his opportunity now if it was Bartas in there you, you wouldn't have that same level of comparison well it will be Lewis Hamilton that he's compared with there's no one better and I reckon he'll hit the ground running and he'll leave nothing on the table well it'll be very interesting and um, I do think uh, George will I think as soon as if he beats Hamilton I think that's when it could get quite interesting within that team because yeah they will obviously want the best for Mercedes but you know when you think about the whole Nico Hamilton thing um, you know it was from both sides it wasn't just Rosberg who instigated that and I don't think Hamilton will take it lightly if he starts no, getting beaten by a be young gun I reckon, I reckon Hamilton will give as good as he gets which will be phenomenal to watch yeah it'll be great to watch and um, it's just another kind of uh, part thrown into the mix really in terms of the, the future of F1 and it's nice to see the f future drivers that you know are going to be at the top eventually they are now moving into into place but um, right we better now talk about this weekend's race we've we've talked enough I think about a uh, recap and everything um, so we've got the Dutch Grand Prix this weekend it's been long awaited and um, our, our good friend Chris uh, who's done one of these podcasts this season is there he he was there today uh, we're recording this on Friday he was there for the practice and uh, he seemed like he was having a very good time and there's plenty of fans there which we expected and um, Napula, what what's your thoughts on the track? Are you, is it's a very kind of twisty circuit. I've heard people say it's a, a, a squashed Suzuka, which is quite some way of putting it, um, or a Monaco without walls. What do you what do you make of this uh, new revised Zandvoort circuit? Um, obviously, it's good to see new tracks or mm. not the new tracks the old track coming back we had Mugello's Imola yeah. uh, uh, Nürburgring so the Sun Ward is um, obviously last time was 85 we had the Grand Prix yeah, there so yeah. no one of us was even <laughs> born yeah <laughs> so uh, I have been driving in a game a couple of times that track uh, I didn't watch practices because of work mm. that's sad actually but uh, what I am heard that um, with a very low fuel tank the track is amazing to drive so that gives me kind of like I want to think about Suzuka but um, the track profile you can't really say it's Suzuka it, I mean, no. Suzuka is just unbelievable track. Uh, but very fast one, a uh, lot of uh, medium to high speed corners, just a couple of very, very slow uh, slow speed corners. So hmm. I think that track is amazing. Obviously, it's narrow. It's been like um, building, the track has been building on a time when the cars was. Um, half of, uh, of sizes what they are now yeah so mm, overtaking only corner one to Tarzan maybe so I'm afraid Sunday will be a little bit boring I hope I'm wrong yeah I hope you're wrong the in the nicest way <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the qualification is something what I'm really looking forward absolutely and um, that is an element that's got a lot of people talking isn't it Cam you know the, the narrowness of the of the circuit is very tight and I'd imagine in yeah. qualifying tomorrow it's going to be a big issue in terms of people starting their laps but um, what do you you know make of the track have you got any hopes for it at the weekend for 
you know, creating some action, maybe because it's quite tough, you know, there's a lot of, there is no real runoff on most of the track, it's just gravel and sand and grass, it's just Oh yeah, you make brutal. a mistake, you're out of the race. Like, so, to be blatant, if you make a mistake, you lock up heavily going into a corner. There is not much between you and the wall. And if mm. there is a wall, you're beaching the gravel truck. Uh, yeah, if, no, yeah. if the if the raised gap between you and the wall, you're in a gravel trap, and you know how hard they are to get out. But with the track itself, look, there's a load of tracks on the calendar, but th I'm, I'm starting to feel like there's more and more at this, like, well, no, wrong word. There's a, an even greater lack of pure race tracks. <laughs> yeah, so there's less right like proper pure yeah. race tracks and Zandvoort circuits. is a ra yeah and Zandvoort is a race track yeah and i think that's why so many drivers are looking forward to driving it yeah they there's it yeah carry on sorry i was just going to say yeah that you're right because the feedback today from all the drivers after the, all the practice session um have been very good they have hamilton mm. Uh, to quote him, said it was you know we need more tracks like this you know it was it was an amazing track to drive, um, and that you know that comes from seven-time world champion, and it's it's kind of interesting, isn't it? You know a lot of fans are kind of worried that like well we might have a bit of a dull race on Sunday because there's no overtaking, but the drivers they don't give a damn. It's like great you know we finally got a, an old-fashioned track, but I think the good news though is guys I've heard. Um, that the strategy could be wide open because the surface, the tarmac that's used is the same one at France and um, oh, right. so it's, it's apparently it very abrasive and obviously the track as well is non-stop, you know, corners and you know, you, the tyres, well. so yeah. I the think the the right front tyres and the right rear tyres are going to take a real massive kill. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, the tyres when they're banked down them. as well. Yeah, uh, I don't think. Oh god, we've got we've got a dispute. <laughs> why? Why? Go on, go on. Because <laughs> go we have it. a hardest tires. Oh, why well, not good boring? Point. That's good point. <laughs> good point. <laughs> and, I, I, uh, I tell you what, we'll ban the hard tires in our podcast, and we'll never talk about them again. And we'll assume you can only use softs <laughs> and mediums. <laughs> yeah, and uh, obviously <laughs> the track is uh, next to like beach kind of area a lot of sand so the at the every morning the grip will be bore uh, very bore yes yeah but i i can't see the but i heard the soft tires last uh, quite a long time i was glad it didn't rain in. there was no blistering so or that much yeah but i heard so it wasn't blistering, but was there like where like was it shredding the tire? Yeah, obviously um, the raw setup in Friday. There is a lot of overheating on the tires. Cars are a little bit um, understeering and oversteering depends on what you're driving. But um, I still believe that tires are not the issue on Sunday. Would well, it be the narrow nature of the track? Survival, maybe. <laughs> uh, I I like it. I I like how it got a bit of something different. Um, it, it's it's a bit more. I don't know. It's it reminds me of Hungary, but it's like very different to Hungary. Um, and you know the banking the banked corners. Sorry, we don't have that on kind of really any other circuit uh, on the calendar and. It should hopefully throw up an an interesting result because going off the times in FP2, um, although Verstappen didn't really get a clean run and he is very much the favourite to win at, uh, his home Grand Prix, um, and Hamilton, and, well, well, I, I mean, you'd, if you were betting on it, I mean, he'd, he'd be a, a if you were safe betting bet, on it, I'd go Lewis. Well, I was just going to say. I wouldn't at the minute because um, Lewis only completed 13 laps in the entire two practice sessions today because that Mercedes broke down. So they, we don't know. We don't know what the Mercedes pace is. 
And um, but the the, the I did see something that he doesn't actually have any more engine components. So if that engine's broken, then he's in trouble. Yeah, that is that is true. Um, I mean, it, it, it won't break again this weekend, you'd imagine. But um, well, but the, what I was going to say, um, the cat amongst the pigeons is Ferrari, who were one two yep. in Zandvoort, their first one two since Monaco, and um, well, it will be very interesting to see can they fight back and um, and finally get a win in their pocket I think there'll be a lot of upset Dutch fans if they do and spoil the party um, I think at least one of them's on the podium well that ties us nicely now onto the predictions so um, we the, the final part of this podcast and Napula your first uh, your first go at the TFR podcast predictions. We normally get these very wrong, so do not worry. Um, <laughs> you'll probably beat us both. But um, uh, just to let you know, he's not over exaggerating that one single bit. I don't so, think we've ever had one episode where we've got anything right. <laughs> but um, but Napula, I'll start with you. Who is going to get pole for the Dutch Grand Prix tomorrow? It's a Carlos Sainz. Ooh, no, I like it. You're putting your neck on the line straight away with a bold pr prediction. Uh, Cam, who's going to get pole? Charles Leclerc. Oh, girl. So, I mean, I've only got one choice here to go different, and I am going to say Max Verstappen uh, because it is okay. his home GP. But I like it. Not a single Mercedes there, which is interesting. Um, uh, Bottas isn't going to be anywhere near my predictions, mate. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's going to be very interesting in qualifying, that is for sure. And obviously with the Ferraris, it, it's just, it's kind of, their car is weird. You know, it, it just suits kind of random different circuits, really. Good. <laughs> um, but, right, I'll come back to you in the pool. The podium. What is going to be the podium? Starting with P3, who is going to finish third in the Dutch Grand Prix? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a very crazy race. Oh, you tempted me. Still, it. still, because obviously what I'm going to say, the yeah, air, it's easy race. No, it's not. Yeah. Ah, uh, third place goes to finally Walter Bottas. Really, I love it. Bottas Bold. getting on the podium. Right, uh, I'll go to you, Cam. Who who's going to be your third place? Science. Okay, so Science getting his uh, fourth podium. Be his third, career. wouldn't it? Mm, fourth. Cause... Of this season, is it? He only had one this season. Yeah, in Monaco. Wow, okay, right. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> anyways, um, I'm going to go for, oh my, I will go for Leclerc for third. Okay. So, Napula, who's going to be second? Ah, uh, Carlos Sainz. Right. Interesting. So science will not convert his pole position. Cam, who's going to be second? I've done pretty much the same thing, Leclerc. Ah, right. So Ferrari second and third. Uh, that would be a pretty good result for yourself. Um, if that happens, well, no, and I a don't very good. Ferrari, well, yeah, you know, true, I guess. But I, very I'd good. I'd much rather be meaning... on the podium, but I don't <laughs> think he will. <laughs> I was probably meaning to say very good result for Ferrari. I think they'd take that. Um, <laughs> yeah. And um, I mean, I'm going to go for. I think. God, this is tough. I am actually going to go with Esteban Ocon second. We've not mentioned him yet. We've not mentioned him yet. But he was seriously quick in FP2 I wasn't today. planning on mentioning him. And um, he was ahead of Bottas on outright soft tyre pace. Because uh, they had to do Bottas' soft tyre 
run because um, they didn't know about red flags for the rest of the session. So I think Ocon could be in the mix in qualifying, which then results to a strong result in the race. So the big one, Napula, who is going to win the Dutch Grand Prix? Uh, I was the FP2, uh, as we talk about, so I believe uh, from the car behavior is a redemption from Monaco and winner is Charles Leclerc. Ooh, Leclerc to win, finally this season. I like it. As a, as a Leclerc fan myself, I'd, I'd take that, I'd take that podium. <laughs> but, um, Cam, well, you obviously... The Kirk can't win for you, and but neither can Science. So who who's going to win? I'm going to have my moment of glory because you have well and truly stuffed yourself putting Ocon on the podium. Mm. Vettel's going to win the race. No, no, no. I, no, no, no. You're, if you're putting Ocon second, I'm allowed Ocon's to go. Ocon's a bit the quicker game. than Vettel this weekend. No, no. I Vettel is. Vettel's car didn't even work. <laughs> okay, all right, fine. Uh, Lewis. <laughs> Lewis, yeah, that's a bit more yeah, like no, it. I, I was about to say, I don't, I don't see Max get in on the podium. Really? It's just it, why? Uh, it's a Max <laughs> thing to do, isn't it? What you think he's gonna, you know, buckle I reckon under he'll the bottle pressure? it. I, no, not pressure. I reckon they'll just have a mistake from pressure. <laughs> oh, I really hope Vettel wins the race. By the way, Vettel wins the race. I'm clipping this, and you're I'm all, sorry, you're but. Both He's you are never both going to win screwed. another race. We won't go down that road. End but... of it. <laughs> um... I don't need to. I'll just clip it when he does. <laughs> well, I'm going to go quite boring. <laughs> Please. And so. um, I'm going to say Verstappen's going to win his home race, oh, you're and the crowd will go absolutely mental. And um... but you said you're going boring. You put Ocon second. <laughs> well, I guess yeah. But for the winner, I mean, that would be you know kind of what you know if you were going to. Um, like I've already said, reckon he'll win by a lot. Um, I think that's tough to say because I think it will. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Napula. I respectfully disagree with the tire thing. I think, <laughs> I think it will be a bit wide open with the whole strategy. So I think it could be close. But you know, who well, knows? There could be a safety car. Too. It's 72 laps, uh, I believe. I reckon it could. Honestly, if it's as bad as what I expect it to be, it could genuinely be a free stop. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, it's total. We don't have a clue, really, um, oh, yeah, because we never had a race. <laughs> um, I have actually got one last prediction written down here, and it is surprise result. But I guess, um, I mean, I've already kind of no. answered mine with that because it's Ocon um, getting a podium, but. Cam, I'll go with you first for this one. What's your surprise result? I, I maybe I'm now going to have my happen. moment. Vettel. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Mate, wreck the boys. Vettel. Right. What's going to Honestly, gonna you will look back at this happen? podcast when we do the review and you are going to sit there and you are going to be so shook because he will win the race. You've already said Hamilton's going to win. You can't have two winners. Because you didn't let me say Vettel. So, so you're going to say Vettel will win the race as your surprise result? Yes. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Right. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'll let it go. Napula. He's not getting anywhere near it, but I reckon he will. Napula, take me back down to earth. Who's get, what's your surprise result? Please say bloody Latifi or something. I listened to Beyond the Great latest episode about Mick Schumacher and uh, oh, it yeah. opened up a l like uh, my eyes completely about that guy. And uh, I get the feeling he's waiting this Grand Prix a lot. Really? And Point? another one is a Monza. Mm. So I think uh, Mick Schumacher will have his best result in F1 and it's going to be in the top 10. I think 8th wow, place. 8th place, I'll give you an 8th yeah, place. I was going place. bold, bloody hell. Points I mean, for I respect Schumacher. it, honestly, I respect it. He's getting better and better. It could happen. It could happen to be fair in the pool because you I mean, know if, if we. But I mean, um, for crying out loud, 
the um, the practice sessions today with the amount of people spinning off and going in the gravel. You never know; it could just be a race. Qualifying is going to be a lottery. Yeah. But um, well, I tell you what, lads. I think we've covered every single um, aspect of F1 for the last, you know, good chunk of time, and uh, we could carry on for ages and ages, I would imagine. But we will call it at that and um, and yeah thank you very much for joining me uh, for this podcast it's been a while like I've already said since we've done one of these so it's good to get back uh, doing them and yeah let's hope we have an eventful Dutch Grand Prix this weekend and uh, and then we will be discussing this next week uh, as we preview when that was won as we preview the Italian Grand Prix um, straight after this which will be the end to the triple header so yeah thank you very much for listening and we'll see you then